Hello everyone Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Welcome back again to my lecture video Okay So today we are going to learn about method of sections Okay And in the previous lecture We have learned about method of joints And also zero force member So make sure you check out that lecture video first Okay You can check the link in the description down below Okay So We use method of joints To calculate the force inside the member Okay so let's look at this uh, figure here, okay, this truss here. Okay. So when we want to calculate the force inside a member, so we will be focusing on a joint, a specific joint only. Okay. This one. Okay. Specific joint only. Okay. So in this case, when we want to find, let's say, the force inside member of GE here. Okay. What we need to do is that. We cannot straight away calculate okay, the force at joint G. Cannot. Okay. We must start from here first. Okay. And then we proceed to G. Okay. So that when we calculate at joint G, we can find the force inside of uh, G E. Okay. F G to E. Yeah. Okay. So there is another much more faster method for you to uh, determine or calculate the force inside the member which is far away from the this one okay the side of the truss here okay so that method is method of sections uh, okay so what is the key point of method of section in method of sections what you need to do is that you need to separate okay your truss or you need to cut it, okay, cut the truss into two sections. Okay, two sections. So let's say we want to find FGE. Okay. And uh, let's say uh, we want to find FGC also. And also FBC. Okay. So, so let's erase this one first. Okay, so when we want to find FGE, this one, FGC and also FBC here. So what you need to do is that you need to cut that member. Okay, and make sure you cut until the truss is separated into two sections. Okay, so we want to find GE, so we cut GE here. We want to find GC, we cut GC here. And we want to find BC, we will cut BC here. Okay, after we cut it, our truss will look like this. So, if you look closely, when we cut the member here, we change it into a force. Okay, so the force here is in tension. Okay, in this direction. So, if the uh, force is pointing outwards like this so means that it is in a tension okay this point also in a tension so please make sure you change the member into a force in tension mode okay easier uh, easier for us to calculate later on okay so make sure you change everything into a tension so here okay let's label the joint uh, e and this is c and this is d okay so when we want to draw the free body diagram, okay, this is not a complete free body diagram, ah. So we must include the force also, right? Ah? So here at A here, this one here. So at A here, so this thing is fixed to the ground. So it means that we will have two reaction force, which is A Y and also A X, okay? Because we cannot move it into Y direction or X direction, so we have both lah, A X and also A Y. And then we also have at D here because this is a roller, so we can move it freely in x direction. So there will be no dx, okay? And but we cannot move it downwards. Means that we will have a reaction force pointing upwards, which is dy, okay? And also at joint E here we have one external force, which is four hundred newton, and we have one thousand. 200 newton at joint C. Okay. So what about this one? 
Okay, the force inside the member. So at joint G here, it will be F G to E. This one will be F G to C, and this one will be F B to C. Okay, so here F E to G, F C to G, and F C to B. So Again, if you refer back to my previous lecture, I mentioned okay, FGE and FEG will have the same magnitude. Uh, okay, both huh? Even though GE and EG, okay, GE and EG here just represents the direction only. Okay, but still the magnitude is equals to each other. Okay, so the next step, how to determine FGE, FGC, and also FBC? Uh, okay, so just like method of joints, okay. The first step is that we need to find the reaction force first. Okay, the value of the reaction force. Okay, so in this situation here, okay, we have this one, ah, ax, ay, and also dy. So let's draw this one. Okay, the reaction force here. Okay, ay, this one, ax, and also at joint D here we have dy. Okay, so let's find AX, AY and also DY using uh, total of force equals to zero and also total of moment equals to zero. Okay, so now we already found the value of AX, the value of DY, and also the value of AY. So as you can see here, AX here is negative 400 Newton. Don't worry, okay, no need for you to change the direction of the force here. Okay, if you draw it in the right direction, so just maintain, ah, maintain to the right. Ah. Okay, so now based on the reaction force here, okay. You can choose which part or which section that you want to use to calculate uh, FGE, FGC, O, and FBC. Okay. So if we refer back to the uh, lecture note, okay, in the lecture note they chose the left side, okay, to solve the value of GE, GC, and also BC. So in this video tutorial, I want to choose the right side. Okay. So the key point here is that either you choose right side or the left side, you will get the same answer. Okay, ah? so let's try to choose this one. Ah? Okay, to solve the value of EG, CG and also CB. So let's remove this part first. Okay, so that we can. Okay, no need for us to confuse. Ah? Okay. Alright. So now, as you can see here, we have dy, we have 1200 newton, and we have 400 newton. So the value of dy is what? dy is equals to 900 newton. So we can label it to 900 newton. Okay. So this thing is in equilibrium. So it means that you can use the total of force equals to zero and also the total of moment equals to zero. Okay, to solve EG, CG, and also CB. Okay, where to start first? Okay, if you look closely here, so these three unknowns here, EG and CB is pointing towards X direction. FCG can be resolved to Y direction and also X direction. Okay, so means that in this situation here, only CG is pointing towards Y direction. So we can start from so we can start from uh, total of fy equals to zero okay let's try to do it okay so let's check the answer huh? So here, when we want to resolve fcg into y direction so it means that we need to multiply it with 3 over 5. 
Okay, as you can see here. So this is the okay, 3 is here, 4 is here, means that this one is 5. Okay, so 3 over 5 minus 1200 here and also plus 900 Newton here. Okay, so FCG, we got 500 Newton, which is in tension. Uh, okay, so if you refer back to the lecture note, we get the same answer. Just like in the lecture note. Okay, even though in the lecture note, we choose, uh, sorry, they chose the left side and we chose the right side, we still get the same answer. Uh, okay? So, regardless, uh, uh, any uh, part that you want to uh, calculate, so you can choose uh, any section, left or right. Okay? You will get the same answer okay so now we got fcg already now next we can find f next we want to find eg and also cb so if you look closely here okay fcg and fcb is coming out from this joint c okay so if we do Total of force x equals to 0. We cannot solve it because we will have two unknowns. So, we can use total of moment equals to 0. So, if we when we use total of moment equals to 0 at joint C here, this one here. So, you can see that no need for us to include the value of Cg, the value of Cb and also the value of 1200 Newton. Okay, so the only unknown here is FEG. That's it. <laughs> okay, so please make sure you choose wisely. Okay, what equation that you want to choose. Force equals to zero or moment equals to zero. And when you want to choose moment equals to zero, choose the correct point. Okay, so that it will be only one unknown. Okay, in the equation. Okay. So, as I mentioned earlier, we will choose total of moment at uh, joint C to find EG. Let's do it. Okay, so now we've done calculating total of moment at C equals to 0. And we got the answer FEG is equals to negative 800 newton uh, okay so let's compare it with fcg fcg we got positive 500 newton feg we got negative 800 newton so the difference between negative and also positive uh, so if you refer back to my previous lecture so i already mentioned if we assume everything to be in tension uh, so that's why uh, i ask you to assume everything to be in tension when we get the answer is positive, means that our assumption is correct. So, it is a tension. However, if we get the answer is negative, so means that we can straight away know it is a uh, opposite direction, means that it will be a compression. Uh, okay. So, this is why when we want to draw the free body diagram of the truss here, make sure to assume everything to be in tension mode so that when we get positive, we know it is tension. When we get negative, it is compression. Uh, okay. So next, we got FCG finished. FEG finished. So the last one is FCB. Uh, uh, okay. So FCB here, because we already have these two unknowns here, we can straight away use total of FX equals to zero. So let's do it. Okay, so now we've done calculating FCB and we got the answer is positive 800 Newton. Uh, so means that because it is positive value, okay, therefore it is a tension. Uh, okay, uh. so if we check back, okay, if you refer back to the lecture note, we got the same answer. 
just like the one that they calculated using the uh, left side. Okay, we chose the right side. Okay, so this is how you can calculate or uh, calculate lah or determine the force of a member when the member pos member's position is in the middle part. Okay. And you can use method of sections to solve it. Okay, if you use method of join, you will need a lot of calculation okay, to uh, calculate the member. So use method of sections. Much more easier, much more simple and faster. Okay. So that's all uh, for today's lecture. See you again in the next video. Bye-bye.